some military facilities are made to evade traditional forms of attack. From the cave networks nestled within Afghanistan's mountains, to the vast concrete bunkers concealed deep in the deserts of Iraq, and more recently, the subterranean labyrinths utilized by Hamas in Gaza. These fortified structures serve as critical centers for command, ammunition storage, and at times, even research labs, playing a pivotal role in warfare and, in certain instances, acts of terror. Their subterranean nature makes them elusive and challenging to target. The U.S. military has developed several different weapons to attack these underground fortresses, known as bunker busters. These powerful weapons have gained recent attention due to their deployment by the Israeli military in targeting tunnels in northwestern Gaza. So, in this video, we'll take a closer look at bunker buster munitions, exploring their historical background, capabilities, and overall significance. Let's dive right in. Bunker busters are munitions known for their significant destructive capabilities. These specialized weapons have the capacity to dig deep into the ground and effectively dismantle heavily fortified and concealed targets. Officially known as ground penetration munitions, bunker busters are generally categorized into two types. The first type is equipped with a reinforced nose that allows the bomb to withstand impact. Its substantial weight provides the required momentum to deeply penetrate a target, while a delayed fuse enables it to infiltrate the ground or structure before detonation. The second type of bunker buster carries two charges. The initial smaller charge serves to create an entry point in the target, enabling the subsequent bomb or missile to pass through without causing damage. The primary charge then initiates a powerful explosion within the target, resulting in extensive destruction in its vicinity. Modern bunker buster munitions have been used since World War II, with the specific aim of destroying German underground rocket factories. Since then, a continuous development of armaments tailored to bust or annihilate bunkers, particularly from aerial attacks, has persisted. The U.S. possesses highly advanced ground penetration munitions due to previous experiences. For example, during the 1991 Gulf War, the Air Force encountered deeply buried and reinforced underground bunkers in Iraq that existing munitions couldn't reach. This led to an intensive development process, resulting in the creation of the GBU-28 laser-guided bunker-busting bomb. This specialized bomb, a 5.8-meter-long steel-cased artillery barrel filled with nearly 300 kilograms of tritonyl explosive, proved highly effective. Equipped with laser guidance technology and stationary fins for stability, the bomb is dropped from aircraft and achieves high speeds, much like a massive nail shot from a nail gun upon impact. Capable of penetrating up 30.5 meters of earth or 6 meters of concrete, the GBU-28 revolutionized targeting capabilities. Additionally, variations in fuse technology, including delayed and smart fuses, have been explored to enhance precision during penetration and explosion, showcasing the continuous evolution of these munitions. Official details regarding Israel's usage of ground penetration munitions in Gaza remain undisclosed. However, in the past, Israel has acquired a diverse array of these munitions from the US. In 2021, Israel sought the latest and most advanced model the GBU-72, a deal that has yet to go through. The recent use of these munitions by Israel reflects its strategy to target underground Hamas positions, because during the 2014 Gaza war, Israeli troops were trapped and killed in these tunnels while trying to target Hamas. Employing bunker busters enables the Israeli forces to strike Hamas from a distance, minimizing risks to their own forces. But ground penetration munitions prove effective not only in targeting tunnel networks and subterranean facilities, but also in the demolition of tall structures. These bombs have the capability to penetrate from the top to the foundation of a building, causing a collapse, rather than a typical explosion. The effectiveness of these bombs heavily relies on precise intelligence. In densely populated urban zones, the risk of civilian casualties escalates significantly, that is why the Geneva Conventions restrict such munitions to extreme self-defense situations and are prohibited in areas densely inhabited by civilians. So, what do you think? 
let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more defense news and analyses.